Yes. Uh -huh. <laughs> See, uh, the Constitution shall be Republican in form. Yeah. Make no distinction in civil or political rights on account of race or color. Yes. Not be repugnant to the Constitution of the United States <laughs> and the principles of the Declaration of Independence. <laughs> and said convention shall provide by ordinances irrevocable without the consent of the United States. Oh, there's a B right there. <laughs> and the people of the said states. <laughs> now, the United States does not allow for the state of Washington to revoke. <laughs> now, this is interesting because I put this approved stamp right here. <laughs> now, there are certain conditions that the debts and liabilities of said territory shall be assumed and paid by the states respectively. Yes, <laughs> the Enablement Act uh, to become a state. <laughs> but then there's that fourth condition. Yes, said ordinances shall provide. Oh. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That provision shall be made for the establishment and maintenance of systems of public schools, Article 9. <laughs> which shall be open to all the children of said states and free from sectarian control. <clears throat> now, this Title IX, where you're in violation of Executive Order 13160 because you issued court orders that involve fraud, yes, <laughs> happens to violate the Enablement Act and the fourth condition of, yes, <laughs> I think that's in Section 4, uh, the fourth condition, yes. <laughs> now, <laughs> every public school in the state of Washington that has knowledge of the fraud of issuing court orders where I was not given any due process, yes, where you have fraudulent statements and forgeries, yes, actually does violate the Enablement Act. Now, I'm telling you, okay, I'm going to sue for the removal of this actual state from the Union of the United States of America. Now, I know as a biological parent, status as a parent, yes, refers to the status of an individual who, with respect to an individual who is under the age of 18, <laughs> is the actual biological parent. And I showed you those birth certificates that happen to be on my drive. Yes, <laughs> I'm the named biological father. <laughs> now, this is an example, uh, actually, this is an explanation, yes, of that executive order known as 136, uh, 13160, yes. Any person who believes himself or herself to be aggrieved by a violation of this order <clears throat> or its implementing regulations, rules, policies, and guidances may, <laughs> personally or through an attorney, yes, <laughs> file a written complaint with the agency that said person believes is in violation of this order oh, or its implementing regulations, rules, policies, or guidance persuading to procedures to be established by <laughs> the attorney general. Ooch, each executive department or agency shall conduct an edu investigation of any complaint by one of its employees alleging a violation of this executive order. <laughs> Now, 4-402, uh, if the office with an executive department or agency that is designated to investigate complaints for violations of this executive order, yes, or its implementing rules, as a parent, I've been obstructed, yes, I've been deprived, I've been denied the equal access of Title IX as a biological parent, <coughs> got the implementing rules, um, the policies, um, such office shall complete a report and refer a copy of the report and any relevant findings, uh, or supporting evidence. Now, I've been emailing you this ri.pdf. Yes. Where there's no signature of the petitioner. Yes. Where there's forgery of the elected oath of office. Yes. <laughs> I would think that supporting evidence of you <laughs> depriving me of the right to participate in the public school system <laughs> that was provided for at the time of the adoption of the state constitution. <laughs> Now, when I get done for the <laughs> removal of the state of Washington from the Republican form of government known as the United States, yes, <laughs> I'm going to ask you, oh, I know, <laughs> but you really did do it, didn't you? <laughs> you decided to deprive American citizens of their civil rights <laughs> after the state had adopted its constitution. <laughs> after... <laughs> and the appropriate agency officials shall review all such material and determine what, if any, disciplinary action is appropriate. <laughs> now, the Department of Justice hasn't investigated, ooch, after I emailed them thousands of times, ooch, that as a biological parent, I'm being deprived of my son, <laughs> that happened.
<laughs> well, you did actually violate the Enablement Act. <laughs> now, yesterday I made a phone call to the Pentagon, yes, <laughs> and I asked them, what happens to the United States military? Get me every secretary of every branch of the United States military for the last 40 years. <laughs> what happens when I sue the state of Washington, yes, for being in violation of the Enablement Act, <laughs> requiring themselves to remove from the Union, yes, <laughs> their actual state? Oh! And they return to being a territory. Now, I would think the Department of Defense has a huge liability for losing any state. <laughs> Why don't you get me this secretary of the Department of Defense? <laughs> now, when I... <laughs> See, you thought it was a joke phone call, but I realized that the 13th and 14th Amendment had been adopted in 1865, and you didn't have the actual legal right to not be a territory until 1888. You are in violation of civil and political rights of the residents of the state. <laughs> now, for the Department of Defense to allow this to happen, I think that... <laughs>